Hedy Lamarr, a Hollywood legend known for her enthralling performances and dazzling beauty in the 1930s and 1940s, was also a pioneer in the field of scientific advancement. Originally named Hedwig Eva Kiesler, Hedy Lamarr was born into a wealthy Jewish family in Vienna, Austria, on November 9, 1914. As an only child, she was the center of her father's attention. He was a bank director with a keen curiosity about the world, which he passed on to his daughter. He frequently accompanied her on lengthy strolls, during which he would explain the complex mechanics of various machines, such as printing presses and trams. This guidance significantly influenced Hetty's thought process. By the tender age of five, she was already disassembling and reassembling her music box to understand how it worked. On the other hand, Hetty's mother, a professional concert pianist, inculcated in her a love for the arts. She arranged for Hetty to have lessons in both ballet and piano from a very early age. Hetty's exceptional intellect was often overlooked, and her striking beauty became the focus when film director Max Reinhardt discovered her at the age of 16. She honed her acting skills under Reinhardt's tutelage in Berlin and made her minor film debut by 1930 in a German movie titled Money on the Street. However, it was her role in the contentious 1933 film Ecstasy, where she made a well-known naked scene, that truly catapulted her into the spotlight. The Pope denounced it, and Hitler refused to show it. It was quite controversial because she simulated an orgasm, and it was the first time anybody had ever done that. Fritz Mandel, an Austrian munitions tycoon, was completely captivated by Hetty after watching her in the play Sissy. They tied the knot in 1933, but their marriage was short-lived. Much like numerous rich men, Fritz took pleasure in showcasing his stunning wife as a trophy. Hetty found herself an ornamental presence at Fritz's lavish dinners, attended by admirals from the German and Italian navies. While her role was to be attractive and poised, she was internally wrestling with intense boredom. Fritz was unsettled by the attention his attractive wife received from other men. He was consumed by jealousy and suspicion, always fearing that she might be unfaithful. His paranoia drove him to the point of having the maid's eavesdrop on her phone conversations. Despite having every material comfort at her disposal, Hetty was deprived of the one thing she yearned for the most, freedom. In those days, Hitler had Austria firmly under his control. Jewish individuals faced restrictions on their daily movements and were progressively stripped of their civil liberties. Hetty's father, Emil, succumbed to the toll of stress and worry, suffering a sudden heart attack. His death marked a significant turning point for Hetty. She held on to the words her father had imparted to her as a child. Be yourself, choose, and take what you want. In 1937, Hetty finally escaped from the confines of Fritz's control. Under constant surveillance, finding a way out was an immense challenge. During a dinner party one night, she came up with a daring plan. She employed a maid who bore a striking resemblance to her, an intentional move for her scheme. Using sleeping powder, she spiked a cup of tea and cunningly swapped it with the maids. Upon drinking the tea, the maid promptly dozed off. Seizing this opportunity, Hetty gathered her jewels, disguised herself in the maid's uniform, hopped on a bicycle, and pedaled away to freedom. During her time in London, Hetty's luck significantly improved when she crossed paths with Louis B. Mayer, a pivotal figure from the esteemed MGM Studios. This fortuitous meeting led her to Hollywood, where she charmed American audiences with her elegance, allure, and accent. Once there, she met a variety of eccentric characters, one of whom was the entrepreneur and pilot Howard Hughes. Hetty shared a romantic relationship with Howard, but his penchant for innovation intrigued her most. Hollywood had kept her scientific prowess under wraps, but Howard sparked her inventive spirit by providing her with a basic toolkit to use in her trailer on set. This allowed Hetty to dabble with inventions during her breaks in filming. Howard also led her through his airplane factories, explained the manufacturing process, and introduced her to the scientists behind the scenes. She researched the swiftest birds and fish in response to Howard's need to create faster military planes. 
She then amalgamated the swiftest fish's fins and the swiftest bird's wings into a blueprint for a new aircraft wing for Howard's planes. Upon seeing her design, Howard proclaimed, You're a genius. Indeed, Hetty was a true genius, with her innovative thoughts constantly at play. As she once said, I don't have to work on ideas, they come naturally. Among her creations was a dissolvable tablet that, when mixed with water, generated a beverage similar to Coca-Cola. To accomplish this, Howard Hughes provided her with two chemists. Although the results of this invention are difficult to apply due to the different strengths of water in different states, such challenges didn't halt the flow of her creative and unique ideas. In 1940, Hetty met George Antheil at a dinner party. George was an eccentric yet brilliant character, celebrated for his writing, film scoring, and experimental music compositions, embodying an inventive spirit akin to Hetty's. During their conversations, they talked about a variety of topics, but the impending war dominated their discussions. George later recounted, Hetty said that she did not feel very comfortable sitting there in Hollywood and making lots of money when things were in such a state. Consequently, Hetty and George started brainstorming ideas to counter the Axis forces. Hetty and George worked on three inventions together, all weapons meant to help the Allies fight Germany. The most successful of their inventions was a covert communication system inspired by Hedy's frequency-hopping concept. George didn't have any specialized engineering training, but he was adept at synchronizing player pianos. The basic idea was that by initiating two miniature piano scrolls at the same time and maintaining the same speed, a ship and a torpedo could communicate secretly at the same frequency. Ultimately, Hetty and George aimed for their torpedo and ship to communicate across 88 distinct frequencies, forming an encryption system impervious to cracking. This method adeptly prevented the interception of radio waves, thereby ensuring the torpedo's successful arrival at its targeted destination. Upon completing this system, Hetty and George donated their invention to the National Inventors Council. However, the Navy decided not to adopt the new system. They essentially told Hetty, you know, you'd be helping the war a lot more, little lady, if you got out and sold war bonds rather than sat around trying to invent new kinds of torpedoes. Leave that to the experts. Get out there and raise money. Though years away from obtaining her U.S. citizenship, Hetty worked for the government on the bond tour, traveling to 16 cities in 10 days to sell $25 million in war bonds, which in today's currency would amount to approximately $343 million. In addition, she spearheaded an MGM letter-writing campaign, resulting in a remarkable total of 2,144 letters sent to servicemen. Hetty also graced the Hollywood canteen with her presence autographing memorabilia for off-duty G.I. Joes. However, the U.S. government seized the patent in 1942 under the Alien Property Custodian Act. Hetty continued to accumulate credits in films until 1958. Despite her success in the film industry, she grew weary of the celebrity lifestyle, once famously stating, Any girl can be glamorous. All you have to do is stand still and look stupid. Over time, she developed a reputation for being difficult and produced two films herself. While making films, Hetty developed an addiction to pep pills supplied by the studio, and her behavior became erratic. In the late 1950s, she was going through a divorce with her fifth spouse, Howard Lee, when her son suffered a car accident. Overwhelmed and deeply traumatized, she resorted to sending her Hollywood double, Sylvia Hollis, to attend the initial divorce hearing in her stead. This decision provoked the judge, who retaliated by reducing her portion of the divorce settlement. As her Hollywood career began to fade, she retreated into a modest, secluded lifestyle. Hetty was arrested on two separate occasions for shoplifting, first in 1966 and then in 1991. She was cleared of charges in the first incident, while the second led to her conviction and a one-year probation sentence. Despite Hetty's six marriages being well-known among Americans, her talents as an inventor were less recognized. Her patent for frequency hopping, though expired before it was broadly implemented, nevertheless morphed into a substantial industry by the end of the 20th century. In 1997, her contributions were acknowledged with the Pioneer Award of the Electronic Frontier Foundation, 
and she made history as the first woman to receive the Invention Convention's Bulby Nass Spirit of Achievement Award. Posthumously, she was inducted into the National Inventors Hall of Fame in 2014. As a pioneer in wireless technologies such as Wi-Fi, GPS, and Bluetooth, she has been named the mother of Wi-Fi. Despite never profiting from her invention, it's now estimated to be worth $30 billion. Hedy Lamar, departing from this world in January 2000 at the age of 85, bequeathed her credo as a lasting legacy. I'll read you something pretty. People are unreasonable, illogical, and self-centered. Love them anyway. If you do good, people will accuse you of selfish, alternative motives. Do good anyway. The biggest people with the biggest ideas can be shut down by the smallest people with the smallest mind. Think big anyway. What you spend years building may be destroyed overnight. Build anyway. Give the world the best to have and you'll be kicked into the sea. Give the world the best you've got anyway.